Hello, my name is Todd Cotta, and this is Catherine, and this is King's Gun Center TV. Well, today we have a very special gun. It was released, it was introduced at SHOT Show 2017, and it was released right about NRA in the, in the spring of 2017. It's the brand new Beretta APX 9mm. Interesting that there is a new striker fire gun out on the market. A few months ago, we re reviewed the P9, RP9 from Remington, and we weren't real happy with that gun. And now we have another entrance in the market trying to eat into the kingpins, which, in my opinion, the, the kingpins are guns that we have here today. And I think you would agree. Glock, Smith & Wesson M&P series, mm -hmm. and the XDs. Mm -hmm. Those are the top, top shelf striker fire guns out there. They've been doing it for a very long time and they know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. More recently, we've had um, uh, reviews on the SIG 320, the Remington RP9, and now the APX. A lot of things being equal, there's only so many different ways you can make a gun. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like these later editions of the striker fire are kind of like throwing darts at the wall, seeing if it sticks. I don't know. So you've got a chance to play with this thing so far, just a little bit, mm -hmm. dry fire and some other stuff. What do you think so far of the way the gun looks and the way the gun feels? Uh, for me personally, I feel like the trigger pull is a little bit heavy for my taste. And the grip is a little bit rough for my hands, but that's just for personal preference. True, but even the Mod 2 M&P from Smith & Wesson had a really aggressive grip to mm -hmm. it. So this isn't quite as aggressive as the M&P series, but it still has still has some grippiness to it. Mm -hmm. um, it does have the finger grooves in the front, which, which to me, when you do that, you're kind of making one size fits all and it's kind of difficult for me with yeah. larger fingers to feel the grooves there. They did something different. They lightened up the slide by making huge slide serrations. Most of the guns that we see have the little tiny lines right through mm -hmm. here. Well, they've just chunked out the whole side of the slide all the way down. So you do have grip all the way down, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Makes it look a little bit like a, a Roman Colosseum or something. It's just got <laughs> a bunch of pillars all the way down the side of it, though. Let's real quick talk about the features. And then I want to talk about two things that concern me with this gun right out of the box. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me, uh, let's go over all the, uh, the sizes real quick. And uh, then we will go talk about some of the issues and we'll go out and shoot the gun. How's All that? Right. Okay. So the APX comes in two calibers, 9mm and 40. With the 9, it comes with a 17 round mag or a 10 round mag. And the 40 comes with a 15 round mag and also a 10 round. The overall barrel length for both is 4.25 inches. The height for both is 5.6 inches. Overall length. The overall length for both is 7.55, and the width is 1.3 inches for both. And it looks like they weigh right at just under two pounds unloaded mm -hmm. when, uh, when you have them out there. Between the 40 and the, the 9, they're the same size in every dimension. Mm -hmm. It's just about uh, a tenth of a pound heavier with a little heavier barrel yeah. that comes with the 40. So the things I want to talk about is, uh, on the website, it talks about the features this thing has. And the first one, it says it has a three-dot sight, which is a standard, not yeah. a feature. It just kind of makes it funny. And these aren't even night sights. These are regular ones. Mm -hmm. Now, the price point of this gun is right about $575 or cheaper, depending on where you can find it. But three-dot sights is something that every gun should have, yeah. right? They talk about the slide serrations coming down the side of the gun, the ambidextrous slide release. It's on both sides here, which is pretty nice. You can do it left or right-handed. Comes with three back straps, and we're going to talk about that right now, three back straps, in just a second. But three back straps, we're going to talk about that. Uh, mag plate. It's got a little extended mag plate here on the bottom of the magazine. We'll show you that, too. Uh, pretty low center of gravity. They're pretty proud of that, but pretty much all the striker fires have that, so it's nothing that's unique to this gun. Modular frame. You can get different colored frames for this. They have an OD green and a, and a tan one that you can slide over the top because it's a serialized frame, not serialized plastic, okay? 
um, reverse, you can reverse your mag button here. So if you are left-handed, you can flip the mag release button hmm. on, on this gun. So it's, cool. it's the same on both sides. And there is a little striker fire button. When you, uh, when you pull the trigger, that little thing right there pops up to show you that the striker is in the safe mode. So when you pull the trigger, that comes up and says that the, that the striker is uh, not safe at the time. It's kind of different. I don't understand why. But one thing that I found with this gun, right before we go to the range, we're going to go shoot in just a second, is the way you have to... There's two things about this gun that really got me. I tried my best to try and figure this gun out without using the internet or reading the book. Mm -hmm. uh, every other gun that I've ever used, whether it's the Glock, whether it's... Yeah, the Glock was a little different when we first learned them back in the 80s because you had to pull the little two tabs down and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But with the Smith & Wesson and the XDs, it's very simple. You can see intuitively how they work. Especially on the Smith & Wesson MP series grips because it's a little pin that you turn 90 degrees and then you turn it out and then it pops out and you put the new one in. On this gun here, you need a tool like a screwdriver. And you have to put it in the gun. You have to you have to put it in the gun right here, and try not to hurt your plastic frame. And you gotta pull it really hard to pull out this thing here. And now your grip comes out okay, then. of the gun. But you gotta use a screwdriver or something, and then it, it kind of clips in this plastic. And I hope this plastic doesn't chip or get loose for this thing to fall out. Then you gotta shove this thing back in in order to do that comes in a, a nice little case too but so with the smith and wesson you grab this thing turn it 90 degrees and pull it out put your new one in pop it back in spin it done this one you got to have a screwdriver or a, or a punch or something to get this out and be careful not to use this as a wedge because it'll scar up the side of your gun here true, or the side yeah. of your gun here and then you got a gun that's all chipped up mm -hmm. the other one is very interesting I tried for like a few minutes to, to, to field strip this thing. I locked it back. I, I, uh, I, I locked it back and tried to pull it down. I let it go forward. I went all the way down trying to get this to release. And coming to find out, on the opposite side of the gun, or on the right side of the gun, there's a button right here that you have to push. There's a button here that you have to push and then bring this down. And while you're holding it down, you have to hold the gun and you have to trip the trigger and then it comes out. And... Then you put it back in, and then you just click it back up, and it's together yeah. again. Here's where it gets interesting. She has already tried this. Miss Catherine, please field strip this gun. I've already shown her how to do it. It's like I can see it. Careful, don't muzzle anybody down there. Don't, don't. I can't. I can't. So my question is, is why would you make a gun that's so difficult to field strip, especially for ladies in the modern day? Matt and I have bruised <laughs> thumbs here from trying to push this thing open. And it is a little bit ridiculous when there's a lot simpler systems out there to make something that's so difficult to field strip. Would you be able to clean this gun? No. Exactly. Uh, it's really disappointing that that feature is so difficult to uh, to deal with. Well, we're going to go out and take a look at the gun. I mean, it's a fine-looking gun. I like the big backstrap tang yeah. here. I like that. That's nice. It keeps my hand away from the slide. But we're going to go in there and we're going to shoot this bad boy right now. We're going to go find out uh, how accurate it is and how well it feels to shoot and the recoil and those kinds of things, okay? All right. So let's head out the range. I'm going to shoot 10 rounds with the Beretta APX in just a second here. I'm going to be aiming at the number one here just to feel the, feel the gun, trigger, coil.
Sugar pole was a little bit long for my taste, uh, but there wasn't much recoil at all. I really liked it. Um, How's the grip feel? It's actually not that bad. It, I didn't feel like I was going to lose my grip at all. Uh, just Good shots. Thank you. Okay, this is the Beretta APX 9mm. We got 10 rounds in here. Uh, so we can do some demo shooting. I've shot this gun once before, uh, doing some time drills with it, and let's see what I do with just some precision shooting, uh, see if I can keep this thing in a uh, nice tight groove. So the Beretta 9mm APX 4.5 inch. Let's do this thing. Ten rounds. I found that I had to have the front sight just a little bit above the rear sight to keep it inside. I think if you line them up, they go down a little bit. That's why you're a little bit low. Yeah, that's what I noticed too. So I had to have this front sight just a shave above the rear sight level, and that kept them right in the box. My first one was right in the middle, and then start coming down. You know, it's a good feeling gun. The trigger is a little better than I would say the Remington RP9. Maybe a little more crisp than the. Uh, XDs, but I think as a whole, it's not a not a bad gun for a mid $500 gun when it comes to the striker fire gun. Uh, nice smooth shooter. Imagine this with an Apex trigger, so it would be the APX with the Apex trigger. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying they're making it, so don't think so. <laughs> um, if I were to give this a out of a hundred right now. I would probably say that shooting is probably about an 85 trigger and feel and grip, but functionality, the takedowns and the mm -hmm. different grip stuff, I'd give that a, uh, maybe a 50. Yeah. Uh, it, when, when I have difficulty field stripping this gun and then I had you do it, it's pretty bad, pretty bad. So please Beretta, understand that we like your gun, but there's some things about this gun that uh -uh, is not gonna work. Well, there you go. That is the Beretta APX 9mm, brand new to market. It's a good looking little gun. I hope that they can uh, fix some of those issues with it, but overall, what do you think? I actually really enjoyed shooting it. Just not cleaning it? Yeah, no. I could never. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank you for watching King's Gun Center TV.